A huge roar from nearly 80,000 people. Well, sports fans everywhere know the magnetic attraction of Dublin and Kerry in the championship. It's the game we've all been waiting for. It'll be handled by Paddy Nealon from Roscommon from the St. Foytlux Club. It's his first All-Ireland football semi-final. The linesman Connor Lane from Cork and Martin McNally from Monaghan. And on the sideline, the fourth official is Sean Lonergan from Tipperary. So, Kerry to play from left to right in the first half. In the middle of the field, Jack... Barry immediately linking up there with David Moran up against Brian Fenton and Tom Lahiff. Ah, and straight away, Brian Howard and a carry man getting involved. The game gets underway as a free kick immediately, which is taken by David Moran, but out to collect it and win that one, get it away quickly. The Dublin cornerback. So it's Dublin playing against the wind, Kieran Kilkenny back inside his own half finding John Small back once again Kilkenny the man who moves around so much one of the game's most uh, regarded, well regarded and respected footballers Owen Merchant they'll remember him and Kerry from uh, 2019 and that goal in the beginning of the second half and here is James McCarthy immediately breaking through here Little touch on it, and Dublin retained possession. This is Lorcan O'Dell getting his hands on the ball early on. Johnny Cooper, carried forward by Lee Gannon. What a, an opening season he's having to his football career. Back from John Small, kicked two points in the semi-final. Looking for the opener here, and he's got it after a minute and eight seconds. Great start by Lee Gannon and Dublin. Well, this young man was flagged a long time ago uh, in the underage ranks in Dublin. They knew he was coming through, they knew he had uh, outrageous talent, and uh, he's just shown us that their opening score, so accurate, no effort whatsoever, just to curl it over gorgeous chair. Lovely start for Dublin. This time last year, he was uh, winning a Leinster under-20 hurling medal with Dublin. Now with the footballers, that's kicked ahead well by Graham O'Sullivan. Nicely in for Sean, Sean O'Shea. Can Sean O'Shea manage to keep it alive? He can. Looking to tie up the match. Brilliantly done. What a start to the game. O'Shea with his first. Dublin and Kerry level. And a terrific foot pass again. Roy spoke about this. This is what Jack wants. Jack O'Connor wants. The use of the foot pass. Gets you in so quickly. Johnny Cooper then to carry it down, then he's challenged by Paul Ganey. Back as far as Owen Merchant. Moved ahead, Tom Lehiff. Formed a very good centre field partnership with Brian Fenton. Breaking his stride then, on comes Fenton to take this one up off his left. Fenton to restore Dublin's lead, but he's put it to the right this time. And that's the first wide of the game. Well, he's been tracked by Jack Barry, he got the step on him, and, uh, oh dear, Ooh. a little fumble here, Brian Obiagli in some difficulty, back there, under a lot of pressure, Adele getting in the hand, one back, taken up here by Kilkenny, they may have missed one a moment ago, and they missed another one, there's no Hawkeye, well that was wide, two in a row then by Dublin, that's sloppy. And Kilkenny, that's a trademark kind of position for him with the left, there is a breeze, obviously, uh, down, down there, it's not helping the dubs Shane Ryan's kick out held in the middle of the field by Kerry David Moran angling this one across two or three players in Kerry shorts waiting for it inside O'Shea once again keeping it alive again he wanted it O'Shea's going O'Shea scores what a start to the match by the team captain a goal in the fourth minute Dublin caught nothing at the back it looked like a lost cause, the ball was going out towards the end line. He retrieved it, cut back inside here, and somehow managed to get enough space to place it in the back of the Dublin net. Well, the minute he was given the back door, he realised, oh, I've won loads of room here, there's a goal chance, and he manufactured it for himself, but the Dublin defenders were really asleep there to give him the, give him the baseline, and cross he came, the keeper kept it low, back of the net. But Simons... Real body blow, Dublin on an advantage, hand from the referee down now, so the advantage is over. Fenton. John Small. Well, now they've got to quickly get their wits about them, Dublin, and recover. 
And they got that opening point through Lee Garden, spurned a couple of chances then and now conceded a goal. And all of that happening inside the opening four minutes. Ferocious challenging there on James McCarthy. Stephen O'Brien acknowledging. Referee makes the call, it'll be a Dublin free kick. Well, those swarm tackles, Jerry, you know they're the toss of a coin, don't you? They just, you know, one ref will give it, another ref will give an over carry, and it's something again I'm on about it all season. It has to be looked at because we don't know from game to game whether they're freeze, freeze in or freeze out. Dean Rock to take this, got nine points against Cork here two weeks ago in the quarter final. Breeze blowing into his face, giving himself every opportunity. Always the most reliable. Good start by Dean Rock with his first free kick. From the most difficult uh, location in the ground to take a free jerk, because you have the open uh, hill just down here to the side where the wind pulls the, pulls the shot. Uh, very tricky, and uh, the ace marksman steps up. There's that goal again. Well, Sean O'Shea. Yeah, he knows it's a goal chance immediately. Dublin are back into the attack again. Brian Fenton. Nicely across here as far as Tom Lehip. Blocked down brilliantly. Lehip has a chance to go and take it again the second time. Really exciting start to the match. Exactly what we anticipated. Gavin White does well. Coming back in, it's James McCarthy. McCarthy looking to try and beat the goalkeeper. Stopped resourcefully by Shane Ryan. Got his legs down to it. Kilkenny picks it up again. Gives it off to Sean Bugler. Back with Brian Howard. Howard putting his boot through it. Big cheer up on Hill 16 and elsewhere. The blue flags are flying. Brian Howard kicks that one over the bar. And it's back to a one-point game. Ah, oh, it's great stuff. It's great stuff. But again, we're seeing some defending where defenders are looking out for their own their own man and they don't give a bit of help out defence. And James McCarthy looks up, nobody coming to me, goes straight in, kept the ball low. Great save, really top guy save from Shane Ryan. David Moran takes this under intense pressure there from Corma Costello. Free kick. Spread out here as far as Paddy Clifford. Chance for him now to. Well, the referee sees a challenge inside. I think it's a foul by John Small on Shawnee O'Shea. So the free kick has been brought forward to about 30 metres out. Yes, indeed, that's exactly what happened. Pulling off the ball, holding off the ball, and Paddy Nealon uh, spots it. And here's David Clifford. David Clifford to uh, try this one from uh, 30 to 35 metres out from the target. A goal and three scored in the. Uh, quarter-final and that after he stumbled on the football and uh, jarred his ankle nicely dispatched playing in his 21st ever championship match so it's uh, one two two three points Kerry with three scoring chances they've availed of each and every one of them so far Evan Comerford playing in his second All-Ireland football semi-final thought about going short and now being forced to kick it long because of the press by the Kerry attackers out over the sideline. Nothing Brian Fenton was able to do about it. Really got the feeling Kerry are absolutely up for this, fully determined this has to be their day. But win it. Sean O'Shea inside here, coming on to it is Dermot O'Connor. O'Connor giving it off, Clifford. Across as far as Tom O'Sullivan, who's got a remarkable scoring record. Sixth highest scorer of the team starting for the Kerry players, and that is his first of the day. 1-3 three to three points, Tom O'Sullivan brilliantly done. Such a flair for attack, he's equally as good, probably as an inside forward as he would be as a corner back. Well claimed by Johnny Cooper, foul then committed. David Clifford, is it? It is, yeah. So Clifford gets a yellow yep. card here very early on, eight and a half minutes into the contest free kick to Dublin to be taken by James McCarthy once you saw his name listed in the uh, 26 yesterday you got a strong feeling he would be playing a few you don't, adjustments you, you, made. Don't, uh, you don't keep talent like that in reserve he's got to be out there certainly not now he's trying to take on Stephen O'Brien under pressure forced to kick it away O'Sullivan has scored a moment to go the other end collecting it starting the next attack back by Ganey Kerry retaining it, building it in measured fashion from the back. 
able to carry it out. Briona Biaglia from on Coeltucht. Once again, Paddy Clifford comes out, very much the receiver, the ball carrier, dishing it off to Dermot O'Connor. Here's Jason Foley. David Moran now trying to get past Tom Lahiff. Support available to him. Once again, Dermot O'Connor under pressure there. Was Clifford again, that's David Clifford this time. And finally, the other David, David Moran, is blocked down well. Brian Fenton gets his hands to it. Away by Owen Marchant. Brought forward by Dublin. Costello initiating the attack. Fisted forward here. Going after it is Owen Marchant. Only ever times he scored twice in championship football. One of those, a goal against Kerry. And still Dublin go forward. Bugler all the way across here. Coming onto it is Tom Lahef. Supporting him is Kieran Kilkenny, trying to get by, not easy. Been marked in there by Graham O'Sullivan. Comes back to Brian Howard, a point scorer already. David Moran trying to pre present a, a buffer in his face. Comes back again. Held onto by Johnny Cooper this time. Cooper just toying with Obiagliuk. Retained by Dublin, once again, James McCarthy feeding it outside. Here comes Kieran Kilkenny, an earlier miss by him. He'd love to score, goes back to Sean Bugler instead. Kilkenny, realising the shot was an impossible one, had he taken it on. Bugler again, calm and composed. Lorcan O'Dell. In the clear here is Brian Howard. Will he fancy a shot? Cuts inside, now he cuts across the football. Strikes, but strikes poorly. And it's gone to the left, and that's a third wide by Dublin. Well, he did everything right, beautiful step uh, to go by a carry defender and, and then slices it with power, but just accuracy off a wee bit. Kick out is accurate out as far as uh, Gavin White. Falls nicely here for Paddy Clifford, feeding it inside here, good run forward. Opportunity to do something against Shawnee O'Shea, gives it back to David Clifford, composing himself on the right, eyes the target, one beautiful shot. And that's a second point by David Clifford and Kerry. Well, the bad news for the Dubs is that Johnny O'Shea, in particular, and just behind him, David Clifford, are absolutely alive to everything that's going on in this game so far. The movement by Johnny O'Shea to get that last one, magnificent. You certainly get the feeling that where Johnny O'Shea is concerned with a goal and uh, a point so far, his uh, form is central to Kerry's chances this afternoon. And Dublin know that. Here's Tom Lehiff from the St. Jude's Club. Carried on here by Odell. Johnny Cooper now. Ready to take on Dermot O'Connor. Odell once again feeding it inside. The very industrious Sean Bugler takes it on. The young number seven is after him. Gavin White given as far as Kilkenny. It's back with Bugler again. They can use the score. Off his left boot and chipped over the bar. Cleverly done by Sean Bugler. And Kerry, look at the pass with Kilkenny here. That's the one that opens it up. But lovely um, composure, Jer. Just slip it over. The game is not running away by any means. It's just the opening quarter. They're feeling each other out. 1 4 to 4. Jack Barry carrying it forward for Kerry. Dermot O'Connor. Three very, very big men in the middle there. Moore and O'Connor. And now Jack Barry as well for Kerry. Stephen O'Brien. Hit the ref. So he will um, throw this ball up. Everyone's just catching their breath, I think, uh, after that uh, opening 13 minutes. Yeah, it's superb football. Jack O'Connor over there, an All-Ireland winner, of course, on uh, three occasions. This is back in the hands of Johnny Cooper again. And off he goes. On his left as Lahiff doesn't use him, plays it all the way down quickly. There's positivity in the way in which they are trying to get that ball forward as early as possible while playing intelligently as well and not taking on uh, shots that are near impossible. Bugler back inside again to John Small. Gives it back to Costello. Hasn't got involved so far. He has now. And that ball drifts away in the breeze. And it's a fourth wide by Dublin. Robert Costello looking for his first score in this All-Ireland semi-final.
Well, by now we have a real sense of the wind that's uh, blowing across the hill as we look into it, and it's pulling those shots. It's um, always very tricky down there is, anyway, Kevin, because of the fact it's so open yep. down at Hill 16. The rest of the ground, big, tall stands all around the place, giving some kind of shelter. O'Shea in there challenging Brian Howard. Free went Dublin's way. Referee says take it again. And it'll be uh, Brian Howard from Rohini. Immensely talented individual. Capable of some great moments. Great footballer. Giving it back to his goalkeeper, Evan Comerford. And then Howard able to take it forward. Unchallenged. Up to the Kerry 65 metre line. Cooper looking to conjure up something here now that will result in another Dublin score. Lorcan O'Dell, very mobile, involved with this man here as well, Lee Gaddon. Chipped inside, one against three or four defenders. Was there a push on Dean Rock? Referee says play on. Dublin fans thought they might get a, might get a free kick there, which never came. Instead, it's Tyg Morley. Stephen O'Brien. I'm pretty sure that was a push on Dean Rock. He got the front position. I know the impasse was slightly blocked, but he still was at the ball in time to push in the back. The referee misses it. David Moran giving it as far as Graham O'Sullivan. The other O'Sullivan, Tom O'Sullivan, a scorer already. A goal and 17 points he scored in championship football. Not half bad <laughs> for a man with number four on his back. Here's Jack Barry. Pursued there by Corma Costello, dragging him across, taking him out of the game in a way. Back in comes Stephen O'Brien, looking for some open space. That's a, a difficult ball for any forward to contain. Dublin have it under control. Howard is able to bring it out. And Dublin can counter now as he gets quickly past David Clifford's attempt at blocking his path. Brian Fenton, on by Bogler. Odell as well, in towards the D. Kilkenny involved, all the way across to Johnny Cooper, gives it back to Kilkenny again. Dean Rock, one point from a free so far by Rock. A one-score game. Lehif gives it back to Sean Bugler once again. Change of direction with the point of the attack. Back to Brian Howard, switched across to the wings. John Small onto his left, measuring it. He's got the accuracy. He's got the white flag as well. John Small from Ballymont Kickhams makes it a two-point game. Well, it's the quick rotation again. When it's down here with Kenny and Dean Rock, and they're flashing the ball back through the centre and out to the right-hand side under the Cusick. And there's uh, men uh, overloading over there. And that occasion, John Small uncontested essentially once he sold the dummy. Lovely shot again with the kit dog floating over. For a gorgeous point. Very good match so far. Great quality on view, as we had anticipated. Jason Foley. It falls beautifully into the path of Pawdy Clifford, who allowed it run on. Being marked by Mick Simons. Cutting inside. Shawnee O'Shea gives it back to Pawdy Clifford. David O'Connor into the corner. Kerry able to retain. Hold with David Clifford this time. He's got two points already. Back here as far as Paul Gainey. Scoreless to date. Looking to try and put that right, won't quite come in for him, however, and that is just Kerry's first wide, and as you can see, it comes after nearly 18 minutes of play. Short kick out. Howard back there. He's been key now so far because he's bringing the ball at pace uh, from the defence. And there's good movement being made by Tom Lahiff, who knew he anticipated that Howard would pick him out once he made a run. Odell. Working really hard, getting on the ball time and again. Cooper pushing forward, Fenton helping. Then coming from a deep position is John Small, having just scored. Confidence high. Fed inside here, a little fumble initially by Gannon. Oh, showed too much of that to Ty Morley, almost pinched it. Now Morley in a race for possession here with John Small. Referee allows play to continue. Carried forward here well by the cornerback. Kicked in by Graham O'Sullivan. Huge inviting ball in there towards Clifford. Wins it, takes the mark. And an easy scoring opportunity at the end of all of that.
Well, he, he uh, used his body fantastically well there. I think it was Mick Fitzsimons was trying to crawl, crawl across him, but uh, backed into him. And actually, the mark, sure, he took it in his, in his tummy, essentially. But uh, here's the reward, lovely point. So once again, a goal between the teams. And that was there a moment ago. These, some of the images from a match so far, that really is sparkling. That's a cracker. It's a cracker. Evan Comerford goes out wide, easily picks out Cooper. Then James McCarthy takes it from him. And they'll move it forward. And they don't hang around because they know they have the quality. They have that sense of belief in one another that they can make things happen. He just saw the importance of the turnover during the modern game. Lee Gannon, he had a kind of slightly double fumble to turn it over. Long ball, Mark over the bar. Bugler challenged. Not a very good challenge that time from Clifford. Didn't work out. Bugler, busy, energetic. Down here as far as Lehiff almost showed too much of that one to Dermot O'Connor. Now runs into a double block, but Kerry can't get it. It's Bugler again. Runs loose in the end to Pawdy Clifford. And the Fossa man gives it to his younger brother, and they work it forward. And Pawdy is able to take a return here. There's a Kerry fellow who fell down on the ground on the far side, but the referee says, go on, keep going. David Clifford kicks from inside the 45-meter line with wonderful accuracy. Terrific shot. He's got four already. Two of them from open play. Well, I'd say the referee may well want to talk to uh, Paul Ganey's tracker on the far side. He was certainly pulled down as he was trying to support that last attack. I don't know if we have pictures of it. He's searching around, perhaps, but he was definitely taken out of the play as he was trying to join it. I thought it was John Small myself, but and, uh, it was a good bit it's, away. It's John Small he's going to as well, yeah, Kevin. Yeah. So what's the colour of the card here? It's uh, yeah, it had to be. a black. So John Small leaves the game on uh, nearly 21 minutes. So he'll be out for the next 10. We'll see him just before the end of the half. This is what happened here. See it on the far side, Ger. Yeah, yeah, just there as he's gone by him. And that happens quite a lot. We, we have the perfect view for it uh, over the last few weeks. A lot of supporting players are just taken out like that, and it really is the linesman's job. Good combined work between referee and linesman. Yep, for sure. And they let Connor the game Lane, continue. They didn't blow the whistle. They let the game develop. They said, we'll deal with it afterwards. Yeah, it's uh, Corpse Connor Lane, isn't it, Ger, on the far side? Yeah. It is. Brian Howard waiting here. Bit of work to do, Dublin. For a drift. First challenge wasn't a, a successful one from Shawnee O'Shea. Howard. Just waiting for a little bit of movement ahead of him. A bit static. So opting instead here to just uh, play it back into Owen Merchant. Lee Gannon. Kerry back in numbers, lots and lots of bodies back there. As ever, Tyke Morley is policing the D, leaving the marking of Brian Fenton to Jack Barry, who's in the D at the present time. Meanwhile, in the middle of the park, Dublin trying to manufacture an attack, and the referee is uh, blowing his whistle. There was clearly some holding back in that D I was mentioning. Tyke Morley questioning referee Paddy Nealon. The end result has got to be a free kick for Dublin. Well, what's good for the goose, good for the gander. It's, uh, he pulled up that same uh, off the ball, holding uh, at the far end, and uh, now he spotted it in the... Is it, is it from the D? It is, yeah. He's, he's asked uh, yeah, to kick, kick it back, back in. in. Well, you expect this is uh, a routine yeah. job for a great team. Rock, rock. Rock, 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 so far. Uh, playing in his 11th Ireland football, football semi-final. Yeah, yeah. Easy enough, one by his high standards, just 20 metres out. A point on the left that has had to be delivered. Let's look at the edge of the D there and you'll see exactly what was happening. The referee spotted the restraining that was going on. Good call by my referee Paddy Neely. Tom O'Sullivan. Jack Barry now. Waiting for the fullback. Jason Foley. Brian O'Biak. So many, so many of their trips inside, inside the uh, Dublin 45 meter line, line so far have produced, produced scores. Stephen O'Brien held scoreless last year in the semi final against Tyrone. 
I'm just going to try and put that right, right. but more importantly, he wants to see his team win this afternoon. Doing well so far. Tom Osato giving it off to Charlie O'Shea. And O'Shea's shot is inside the right hand on right. And that's a goal and two points now by Charlie O'Shea. And it's 1 7 to 6 points. Jared, the movement is mesmerizing. They're coming at different angles, and the hand has it as a pace. They're making all of the space and gaps all the time. And then the accuracy of the finish at speed is, adds a delight to watch. And when they do that, Kevin, they're not just hanging around to see, you know, 60 seconds later, will we have a shot at goal? Once we have moved out the opposition, and their concentration has collapsed. They're always so confident in themselves that they will manage to get a shot away. Well, look, look at the time, Jared, 24 41 one, one. You remember the first 25 minutes in yesterday's other yes, semi final? I was asleep at that stage. Here's Lee Gannon. Yeah. Getting away from Dermot O'Connor. Out as far as with a Challenged vigorously here by David Moran. Lahith back into the hands of Owen Burchin again. From the Nafi in the club. Up. Very, very, very pacey man after him goes Paul Clifford. Cooper. Cooper. Just looking to see who's moving inside. There's a cluster of players around the 45 meter line. 12, 14 players in all in a group there. Then a big space between them and a couple of players waiting in the inside forward line. But, but Dublin are being patient and they want to just kick the ball away and give possession back, back to Kerry. Six points behind. The black card, of course, also a factor with uh, John Hall sitting in the, the season. It will be on the 31st minute. James McCarthy, back once again it comes, back to Kilkenny, always slick, clever in his approach, using Sean Bugler, well they're certainly uh, using up the seconds here before they will be back to the full complement of 15, probably in about uh, another five minutes, so they won't have lost too much so far, and they're going for it again with Cooper against him. Stephen O'Brien can't put in the challenge. Then the challenge comes in from Jack Barry. Still Cooper holding off O'Brien for the second time. And now coming forward here is Fenton. Slipping it in here to Adele. Back as far as Gannon who can score. But runs into a, a block here with two determined Kerry defenders. One of them was Gavin White. They get it out. And the Kerry fans loved it. They get it out to David Clifford. Swept away as far as Paul Ganey. Switching the direction of the play. Carried on here by Pawdy Clifford. Still a bit of work to do to get the space, get the room in which to strike for a score. Clifford, will he back himself? Taking it in past Merchant with the right, off the post. It will be, or will it not be? Penalty. It's a penalty. Gavin White was in there. Penalty has been awarded. Now, I'm, again, my first instinct was that Gavin White, when he went right, he may have lost his footing. I'm seemed to slip. Well, we shall see here now. This is the difficult part for, for a referee, of course. Oh, well, there no, was contact. No, ah, but it's very little, Jerry. Very little, I Very accept. little. Well, well, let's see what everybody else makes of it. It was Lock and uh, Odell, wasn't it? Number 25. Yeah. And who'd the, been and marking Gavin White. The end result is a penalty has been awarded. Meanwhile, Evan Comerford is uh, in need of some attention, it would appear. Didn't Hasn't see got it happens. so far. Is this a case of uh, just putting the added pressure on the Kerry player who's going to end up taking the kick? Possibly Sean O'Shea. Yeah, it is Sean O'Shea. Well, is it mind games? I don't know. You never like to suggest mind games when a player is injured. I didn't see what happened. Maybe in the tussle on the goal line, he was protecting his goal line after all, uh, that Evan Comfort got hurt uh, in that uh, particular play. 
So the medics uh, are out here to attend to the goalkeeper from Ballymont Kickhams, who's 24 years of age. That Dublin defence has uh, conceded three goals in this year's championship already. Uh, not sure. Not sure what happened here because he, he seemed to be okay, didn't he? Uh, 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 the game the game is certainly going to have to be held up here even though the substitute goalkeeper David O'Hanlon who played against Wexford in the first championship match of the season is poised to come on should he be required but the game can't continue without a goalkeeper right. with a penalty coming up what happened there is a bit peculiar because at one stage he looked to be holding his head then his leg so we're yeah. just not sure well here's 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 an issue Jer, to consider the uh, silliness of the black card timing rule the clock continues to run okay so we know we now must be in the third fourth minute of nonsense if that's what it is up at the uh of the dublin goal month and all the time john small's black card time lapse is ticking. I, think I think john small will be back in one minute yeah he was black carded after 21 minutes as you can see we're on 30. so a minute to go and they're back to the full complement but before all of that there's a penalty coming up and Sean O'Shea who's already scored after four minutes which was his fourth ever championship goal has a chance to put a big big gap between the teams before we reach half time he's a bottom right hand corner merchant let's well, see does he change his mind thankfully Evan Coverford is okay and able to face up to the kick that may not surprise us I think no Big moment down at the goal where we had those penalty shootouts in the Galway Armagh quarterfinal in the semi final of the All Ireland. Sean O'Shea, big moment. Does he score? He saved it. It saved even the second time. Oh, yeah, that was pretty Heroic dangerous. by Evan Comerford, and that second follow up there has gone down very, very poorly, as you could imagine. The goalkeeper had saved it, he'd been injured before that. And now, Dublin players are going across to Shawnee O'Shea, as you can see, and expressing their venom and their anger. Well, it, it was it was certainly dangerous and reckless. And this will be interesting to see what uh, Paddy Nealon makes of this. But the ball did squirm free, but uh, my God, he went in full after it. It's got nasty. And the referee now needing to deal with this pretty firmly. Yeah, the officials are on the field and they're watching it, the, the umpires, but uh, still heat it. Shawnee O'Shea then, the man who was central to this. And full credit to Evan Comerford for making very good penalty save under enormous pressure. Yeah, it's a four penalty there. Oh, that's, that's the follow-up, however, was over the top. Me. Yeah, he, and unnecessary. Well, he has to consider the safety of Evan Comerford. He can't just lash out like that and drive a boost into it. And the left boost may have made contact with his head as well. Oh dear. So Shawnee O'Shea is waiting to see what the referee's going to do here as uh, Paddy Nealon consults. Connor Lane and Martin McNally. Martin on the right hand side there from Monaghan. He'd be very lucky if he escapes uh, well, without he was, a rate. He, I think he was going in to try and get the ball clearly and not to uh, injure the Dublin goalkeeper. It was a, an attempt by Shawnee O'Shea, but it looked bad. I suppose it'll be the degree of force and uh, dangerous play that they interpret it to be. And they're having a good chat about it. During the, the black card, which is now after expiring in terms of the 10 minutes is up, Kerry have only scored one point. They've missed the penalty. Dublin have scored a point as well. So they yeah. they haven't damaged themselves in any way, shape or form by virtue of being down to 14. Well, there could be a bit of damage coming up here now when the referee deals with this. First of all, making sure that uh, Evan Comerford is OK. And now he may well have a, a word with Shawnee O'Shea as well. Going across there is 
called Gainey, but uh, Sean here she is walking away towards the 45 that he wants. I think he'll be turning around shortly and going back. Well, Sonny O'Shea is now uh, 40 metres away from the referee. It's Paul Ganey and it's Lee Gannon who are nearest to the official. Now yeah. he, Owen Marchin. That was the off-the-ball stuff. He's dealing with that first. The two yellows, I imagine. So the cards, one per player. Marchin, Ganey. So now Paul has put the notebook away. That seems to be that. The referee it. may have taken the decision that the player went for the ball, yeah. made an incidental contact then with the goalkeeper, didn't look great, but the referee says it wasn't deliberate. That is my reading of it. Mick Fitzsimons under pressure here. Back to his goalkeeper, Evan Comerford. He was fouled, hand pulled, free out. Out as far as Merchant. Well, that is a big, big lift now for Dublin, that's for sure. Six minutes of additional time announced. This is carried on here by Lorcan O'Dell. Remember, he was involved in the Gavin White incident that resulted in the uh, penalty being given in the first place. James McCarthy. If Dublin now can get the next score. Who knows what's going to happen? And here's the man who had that black card. That's kicked across there by John Small. They'll be doing well to keep that in play. Well, he's back anyway, John Small. But he has had a history of black cards and the yellow cards and all kinds of cards. Well, it was a hot day to start it, but the temperature has gone up a few degrees now. And there's a, a lot of physicality going on off, off the ball. And everybody needs now to get a bit of common sense. It comes out to Tyg Morley. And then David Moran kicking, kicking it across as far as Tom O'Sullivan. Booted ahead here to Shawnee O'Shea. Wasn't exactly flavour of the month among the Dublin players immediately after the uh, penalty. Has it back again. Gavin White. It might be best for Sean O'Shea to play a bit of first touch football now for a few minutes, I'd imagine. Dean Rock comes in, challenges. David Moran. Very strong opening, 25 minutes to the match. Got a bit heated in the last 10. Pretty much coincided with the time when Dublin were down to 14. Jack Barry, pursued by Odell, challenged there as well. Much of Gannon coming out, and in the end he holds off far too long. And the free kick to Dublin. Coverford. Taking it out, carrying it into the challenge. Challenge there by Dermot O'Connor. Well, Dermot O'Connor stood his ground essentially there. What, what did he want him to do? He can't walk out of the way. Evan Conkert kind of pirouetted into him, but he got his free. Howard. Johnny Cooper now driving Dublin on here. Moved forward again here. Brian Fenton. Cormac Costello hoping to try and cut inside there, but it wasn't possible to go on the loop. Too many Kerry players back there defending. Sean Bugler, two and a half minutes into the six minutes of added time. Kieran Kilkenny. Dublin looking to try and get the last score before half time, bring it back perhaps to a, a three point game. Owen Merchant. James McCarthy, Merchant again. Kerry happy to keep them out there, right on the edges. John Small cutting inside. Costello. Transferred to Odell, Lorcan Odell, back once again to Cormac Costello, who finally tries to nail one here, but uh, hits the fifth wide by Dublin in the first half. Both teams haven't scored now since the 24th minute. Drawn a real blank over the last 15 or so minutes of this game. Gavin White challenged strongly there by Fenton, but Gavin White stood up strong. Gets away from the great man in the middle of the field for Dublin. Feeds it out to Stephen O'Brien. Fed forward here, Jack Barry. Again, the referee's whistle sounds. 
Kerry's free kick, which is taken. And then Johnny Cooper comes in and flattens Fordy Clifford. The nature of the game has changed, certainly. Here's David Clifford getting away from the would-be challenges on his right. Puts pay to anything that Dublin can offer against him and strikes with wonderful accuracy again. Applauded by the fans here in Croke Park with his fifth point of the match. Star performance, not for the first time, by David Clifford. Yeah, that's magnificent. Uh, you know, it's sold the dummy. Well, the brother got it into him immediately. That's, that, that was the first thing. Then Jinx then takes on two players, goes through the gap, uses the skill to control it, then gets back onto the right foot this time, Ger. And then with the right foot, just a gentle curler over. And that's why the fans just love to see him play. He's... Well, this is uh, what happened earlier yeah. on, and that was the reason why. We found a weakness in his game. He can't tackle. Well, when you can see him go forward and uh, perform his magic at the other end, that's what is always worth coming to see. Kick out for Dublin at the end of all of that. There'll be another minute or thereabouts still to be played at the end of this first half. Comerford going long, looking for James McCarthy. Over his head, however, picked up by Gavin White. And Kerry are ready to tear through that Dublin defence again if they could. But this time, stymied by Owen Merchant. Well positioned. Paul Ganey Cooper. is struggling a bit, Jerry. Just it's not happening for him. One of their top forwards, but he's just not hot. It's everything he touches is just going away from him at the moment. Here comes James McCarthy again, leading the Dublin team well. John Small, taken by Costello from Rock's pass. Missed one a little while ago, so he's uh, realising he's in a no situation there. No angle. Poor feedback. Nobody coming in to collect. Kerry there in numbers. Once again, playing to a pattern, playing to a plan. This is the day they feel they're going to end that long barren spell without a win against the Dubs. Well, that final pass by Paddy Clifford went astray. It's the end of a first half that had an awful lot to recommend it. So many things happened. Lots of good football. A barren spell as well. A penalty. Uh, a black card. A save by the goalkeeper. At half time, there's, uh, what is it? One eight to six points between these teams, but uh, really so much to look forward to from the uh, second half here. Both sides have had some really good moments, some really good football produced, great scores as well. It's, it's, they've been level just on the one occasion here, but the crowd at Croke Park have certainly savoured what they've seen so far. At the break, it's Dublin six points, it's Kerry one eight, 23,602 people are in Croke Park this afternoon. Five between them. Start of the second half. Well, the one thing the lads really didn't pay much attention to, and maybe why would they, was the wind is significant and it is favouring the dogs, so that will that will help uh, them to chase this lead. Paddy Nealon gets the second half underway and it's Kerry who have their hands on the ball immediately. David Moran, confronted there by Tom Lahiff, Coming out to win that one and win it smartly was Owen Merchant. Lahif. Lots of Kerry players there to try and win possession here. Moran setting them going. Clifford teasing ball across to Stephen O'Brien. And O'Brien goes down. Pick it up the ground. the ground. Yeah. I think that's a that's a top class call. I had a sense of it from here. We'll see the replay. Maybe there was a hot one, was there, Ger? It's definitely a penalty yeah. if he doesn't call the foul. Well, he's called it. So K Dublin get away with that, and Kerry are able to hold possession again. Here's Shane Ryan. David Moran. You can see the way that Kerry started this second half fully determined this is going to be their day if that penalty goal had gone in they might well be halfway towards their ambition at this stage and incidentally there were six minutes between the 
award of the penalty and the penalty actually been taken Shane Ryan adventurously carrying it out getting there first is Dermot O'Connor ahead of Sean Bugler now looks up decides to go short Shawnee O'Shea kicked in here by Paddy Clifford bounces nicely for his brother David onto the left up and over the bar again what a match he is playing really turning it on for the fans at Grove Park up against Mickford Simons and the 33 year old is having quite a day trying to keep tabs with uh, David Clifford no that is off the ground yeah and uh, that's a very good call by the ref in that last play there another David Clifford special but Pawdy had ran 50 meters to take the pop pass off and he wanted to give it to him he had he had given the original pass by foot marvelous play the margins to six again and that time James McCarthy deemed to have held on too long free kick to carry everything's going their way at this time Moran Able to carry it out is Brian Obiagli in his sixth championship season. Jason Foley from Valley Donahue. Morley. Nicely kicked ahead. Collected here by Graham O'Sullivan. Down as far as Paul Gainey, yet to score in this match. Looking to cut inside, then forced back out again. Angle tighter. Laying it off, poorly doing so. And Mick with Simons gleefully able to get it away for Dublin. A let off for them. Now, can they benefit at the other end? They need to get going. Lehif. In as far as Howard. Got one very, very good score in the first half. Challenge there by Stephen O'Brien. Helped out by Brian Fenton. Fenton holding on to it. And the referee saw another foul committed so it's going to be a free kick that was by Stephen O'Brien uh, fairly well it looked close fist but he wrapped around a fairly hard tackle and uh, had he needed to judge it to be free correctly he's having a very good game uh, big match for him he's from my neighbouring club Gerard down in St Folius just a few miles outside was common town and uh, he's been on the circle quite a while now it's a, it's a big day for him it's going well so far change made Paddy Small comes on and it is Lorcan O'Dell who's going off so that's the first change made in match by Dublin change of emphasis Small much more an inside forward a scorer Dublin have not scored since the uh, 24th minute of the game So a long, long time ago, Dean Rock needs to point this. Catches it now, has he got the direction? He hasn't. He's pulled it. First wide of the second half. Six wides by Dublin. Still six points behind. That's the first three he's missed all season, Jer. Well, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Shane Ryan just contemplating what he's going to do with this. Booting it out here towards David Moran was the attention. I think he was in between two minds, the goalkeeper. Dublin come again with Bugler playing it in invitingly in there. This is Paddy Small. Not in from the start, but now making a contribution. And that contribution has ended up with a Dublin score here, scored by Brian Fenton in his 49th championship match, retrieved there by Small and finished, completed by Brian Fenton. Yeah, there's definitely a helping breeze. You can see it with the ease that Brian Fenton just struck that ball from 35, 40 metres out, sailed over the bar. There's a change here now as well, Stephen O'Brien. Dara Moynihan is uh, one of those coming on. And the other player making his way in will be Killian Spillard. Will be for Paul Ganey, I imagine he's just not having a good day today. That is correct. Well, they're not afraid to ring the changes. There's still a hot five up, but another one for Dublin, Kevin. On comes Davy Byrne, and going off will be Johnny Cooper. Yeah, Colm did mention, uh, Colm did mention the legs, and that tends to happen. 
Cooper is only a star. This is his third start in five matches. So no great surprise there. Davy Byrne there has never really let Dublin down. Always ultra reliable. So both sides making the changes within seven minutes of the second half. And it is Dermot O'Connor trying to advance here, helped by Dara Moynihan. His first involvement. Quickly transferred to O'Shea. Back here as far as Pawdy Clifford. Trying to cut inside James McCarthy. Not easy. Holding on to it here. Clifford again. They have the advantage, five points in front as they were at half time. Graham O'Sullivan. Clifford again. Keeping it going, Jack Barry, support from O'Shea, helping out is Tom O'Sullivan. And taking it back here again, Jack Barry, keeping it away from Dublin hands. O'Shea, a goal and two points alongside his name so far. Dara Moynihan will have been disappointed not to make the start in this game. Threading beautifully to the other substitute, Killian Spillan, rolling it back. Opportunity to do something with Graham O'Sullivan back to Moynihan then and Dara Moynihan kicks and scores Instant contribution from the man from Spa in Killarney well, The management will be delighted with those moves, you know, they made a couple uh, a piece there and uh, the first reaction comes from the carry bench What a ball that is by Lehip all the way up here to Small and Paddy Small between the posts Good point. So the two subs who came on, two or four subs who came on, have uh, scored immediately. Well, Back to a five pointer again. Yeah, that's their job. They have to make a net contribution when they come in. They're not just coming in uh, to get over the disappointment of not being selected. They have to play now and contribute. Body Clifford down here to O'Shea, laid off as far as Gavin White. Tempo of the game picks up. Those scores have added greatly. Still a little gap, however, which uh, Kerry have got to try and bridge. Morley looking to try and see Kerry's lead expand. Bruno Biaglia finding a gap. Beautifully kicked down towards Killian Spillan. Holding on to it, nothing rushed. Not going to try a crazy shot, just retaining possession. David Clifford, six points already scored in the game. Back to Morley. Another one of the Temple No players, Jack Barry. Switch calmly across here to Moynihan. Doesn't score an awful lot in the championship. That's only his third ever championship point that he got there a little while ago. Did score a goal against Dublin in Tralee in the league this year. And that's a poor pass. And the turnover results in Dublin taking it forward with Gannon. They're on an advantage. They don't need it. They've got Bogle now. They're advancing with a lot of purpose. Here's the opportunity. Here's a chance. Crushed in brilliantly, and Costello has done it from a turnover. Connor Boba Costello with a goal on 45 minutes. Kerry had it, they lost it, they gave it away with a piece of sloppy play. Carried downfield brilliantly and finished magi magnificently by Cormac Costello right into the corner. What a game we have now. 110 to 18. Well, he picked his spot. We were right behind it. And he made his mind up that he was going for the net. Here comes David Clifford. Can he lead Kerry yet to victory? Another chance falling his way, but this time he's missed. It's only Kerry's second wide of the game. One in each half. It's a two point game in the All Ireland football semi final. Dublin now with renewed heart following that Cormac Costello goal, his sixth ever in Championship football. Well, Gannon. As they say, Ger, it'll be some game to win now for the Dubs. They're right back in the pot. Davy Byrne carries it on. Into the corner here. Nicely contained. Small. Doing well. Carrying it in. Feeding it back. Lost. And then fisted up and fisted over the bar. It's a one-point game and Kilkenny has got it. 110 to 19. 46 minutes into the game. Some match now. <laughs> we don't have a roof, <laughs> thankfully, because they've blown it clean off at this stage. The noise has just gone crazy around the stadium. 
Now the bravest and the best will be winning this one. Which is it? Graham O'Sullivan using his goalkeeper. Out to Shawnee O'Shea. Such a long time ago when he got his goal, back in the fourth minute. And then there was that penalty miss. Didn't hit it all that terribly well, but credit Evan Comerford for making the save nonetheless. Uh, great champions. Don't don't leave the arena easily, do the jerk. And we're seeing that from Dublin. A tremendous comeback. A brilliant goal from Cormac Costello. He was looking for that ball a long way out. Graham O'Sullivan down as far as Killian Spillard goes, then checks back inside on his left, trying to measure this one. Has he got it? He has. I He's oh. put it wide. He's uh, thinking about it. No Hawkeye. <laughs> Can't go through the technology. Well, in fairness, it was the uh, wide on the on the green flag side, if you don't want to say, down we, the goal side. We've got umpires with Hawkeyes anyway, so here we go. <laughs> Racing for possession, Tom Lahef. Trying to get there, ahead of Jack Barry. Won by Tyke Morley. Fisted out as far as Gavin White. A wonderful afternoon in July. Two teams serving up a really exciting match. Dara Moynihan back as far as Gavin White again. Looking to try and get it across the field or keep it in Kerry possession anyway. Morley now can switch it. That's Jason Foley carrying it on. David Moran, nonchalantly almost, fisting it down. Carried on by Paddy Clifford. The ball carrier, tracked there by Brian Howard of Dublin. Fisting it inside here. Shawnee O'Shea was the intended recipient, but picking it up and taking it away, Mick Fitzsimons. He might have had a rough time earlier on against David Clifford, but he's doing well in the second half. Out by Sean Bugler. Swung around there was Brian Fenton. Yes, and that's a tactical foul for sure, and it's a consistent fouling as well by Jeremy O'Connor. That's the point uh, Brian Fenton was making to him. And again, the referee is right on his game, and uh, he's going to flash the card. So another card for a Kerry player. I'll make it three cards for Kerry players. The teams have only been level one so far. So Dublin now looking to try and make it 110 to 110. We got a shot of Jack O'Connor there. His semi-final record is exemplary. Hasn't lost in a semi-final. Trying to keep that record going. Desi Farrell, the Dublin manager, looking to try and keep the record that Dublin have had over Kerry in recent years going a little bit longer as well. well five minutes ago, Jack O'Connor was having a very pleasant Sunday afternoon. Brandy and cigars, well, I won't quite say, but he was in a strong position. It's uh, it's all flat out now. It is, with Kieran Kilkenny. Back into the hands of Brian Howard again. Laying it off to Bugler. Moving in here is Lee Gaddon. Got the opening score of the game for Dublin. Bugler again, perpetual motion. Holding it up, they see no clear, obvious way through, so they're being patient, Dublin. Well, if they can flash the equaliser, you know what's going to happen in this stadium. Bit of a contrast between the way both sides approach their attacks. Dublin careful, considerate, slow at times, Kerry a little faster, but here's Kilkenny, great marking by Kerry, brilliant marking by Kerry, they've turned it over, and Jack Barry has the ball in his hands, Costello was trying to swing him around. Eventually, it's Moran who kicks it into open space to Shawnee O'Shea. And now Kerry can move with purpose. O'Shea from Ken Mayer. Fisted ahead. Picked up by Paddy Clifford. We'll try and get it on the left. Kicks under pressure, but kicks it over the bar. And, uh, and Kerry stretched their lead to two. It's 111 to 19. Paddy Clifford's first. Well, I said earlier the importance of the turnover in the modern game of football. Kieran Kilkenny gets caught in a swarm and up the other end of the bar. 26, Adrian Spillan has uh, come in. Well, eight minutes between that last score there and the one before it. But uh, in comes Adrian Spillan anyway. 
And here's the goal. Ger, there was hardly a foot that he's aiming at. You can see that's a brilliant angle of it. And he was so committed to that spot and drove it with power and accuracy, low and hard, to the left corner, just where the keeper couldn't get to it. He made a great effort, Shane Ryan, but squeezed in by the post. And he hadn't many opportunities before that, Cormac Costello. And that's the first uh, goal, isn't it, that he's conceded in the championship? That's right. In the second half so far, Dublin have scored 1-3, Kerry have scored three points. And now, Dublin come again with Davy Byrne leading the attack, helped out here by John Small. Cutting inside is Sean Bogler, Dean Rock. Looking to try and get it under control there as well was Paddy Small, breaks away from Small. And every turnover now by Kerry has been cheered to the Raptors oh, by the Kerry fans yeah. here. That's definitely a foul. He just drove into him. And doing the driving was Adrian Spillan. Referee's got to have a word. He was anticipating the tackle, a hard tackle. I think it was from Lee Gannon. And uh, Gannon stood his ground and just drove through him. He'd pick up a yellow for this, I'd imagine. It was rough enough play. Referee still doing the writing. And at the end of it all, it is a yellow. Only on the park about three minutes, I guess. Probably pumped up. No yep. doubt waiting to get his opportunity. This is what he did. But and uh, Lee Gannon was the one at the receiving end of that. Might have been accidental, but uh, a yellow card nonetheless issued. Davy Byrne carrying it on here. They'd got to within a point a little while ago. Still only two adrift. Lee Gannon from Whitehall, Cullum Kills. Fran Howard. Here's Kilkenny, having got on the scoreline of the second half. Fenton likewise. Jack Barry goes everywhere. Fenton goes onto the left. It's a shot that has gone the wrong side. The cheers you're hearing are Kerry cheers. It's a seventh wide by Dublin. He's good at those, Jared O'Brien Fenton, when he goes in. Face shaped onto his left hand side. He's a lovely curling kick. Midway through the second half at this stage. That's one by Paulie Clifford. He's got open space in front of him. Lee Gannon trying to put in a challenge. On it goes. That's Clifford. That's a rather it's Spillan. And it runs away eventually. Gillian Spillan then trying to help his brother Adrian. Battling to try and hold on to it here under enormous pressure from Sean O'Shea was Sean Bugler. Yeah. Bugler on the deck. Free awarded. That's that containing foul again on the on the fast break. And uh, all teams are doing it. It's not just Kerry, it's not just Dublin. But it's, uh, as I mentioned just in the comedy, these sort of fouls are a cancer in the game. They break down all momentum. And he's rightly got a yellow. So we've now got five Kerry players with yellow cards. And the debate now will be if you picked up anything in the follow through after the penalty. You recall he uh, got off without any card. Evan Coverford. Dublin looking to get the next score. Brian Howard holding it. Mick Fitzsimons playing in his 13th ever All Ireland football semi final. Carried forward again by the cooler man. Going across to try and close down the space. Shawnee O'Shea. Tom Lahiff. Kilkenny. Force backwards that time. Lee Gannon. Here's James McCarthy. It's a little bit more pace now with this particular attack. Will it end up with a scoring opportunity? Bugler. Take it in again by Gannon. Slow down once again. Kerry with lots of bodies back. Most players picked up. McCarthy. Small. Falls. Trying to get away from Gavin White's challenge. In the end, back to help out Adrian Spillan. And Kerry once again turned the ball over. That's three times now in the last seven or eight minutes. 
That's a battling performance there by Paulie Clifford, and he wins the free kick. Great work by one of last year's All-Stars. More changes uh, coming up pretty soon. Number 20 has come in from the dub. And the number 20 is Sean McMahon. And he replaces Owen Merchant. 24-year-old McMahon then coming in in place of the player from Nafiana. Under pressure immediately, the uh, Dublin defenders. O'Shea brought forward. Tom O'Sullivan. Kerry now hoping to try and manage the game as best they possibly can for the remaining probably 17, 18, 19 minutes. 13 of the 70 remaining, but uh, we'll expect at least five minutes, I imagine, of additional time to be tagged on. Jason Foley. Here's Dara Moynihan. Again, no particular urgency. The important thing from Kerry's point of view is not to concede possession. They don't want to turn the ball over. Very nearly getting into trouble there was Gavin White. Got himself out of difficulty quickly. Obiaglia. And then there's a player loose on this far side. And that is Tide Morley. And the 28-year-old moves away smartly down there. Almost lost by David Clifford. A couple of challenges coming in on him. But Kerry have retained it. Again, it is Adrian Spillard. Killian, his brother, helping. Dublin trying to get the ball back, finding it impossible. Tyg Morley. Great tight work there by the Curry players. Lovely hand passing and side steps, and it was narrow and it was tight, and they held on to it. And Dublin are having to work extremely hard, going side to side. And still not able to get their hands on the ball and win it back. Moynihan back to Morley again. Carried on by Jason Foley. No obvious ball to give further field, so he stays lateral with Jack Barry. And now it's uh, Kerry's turn to just play ball, keep ball, go lateral, go sideways, go anywhere you like, but just don't give it in and lose possession. Here's Obiaglia. Obiaglia cutting inside, showing ambition. Back as far as Gavin White. In the hands of Shotty O'Shea. Must have had it now for about 60 seconds. Foley again. Well, Dublin have got to come out. They've got to win possession back. O'Shea, still just a two-point game. Crowd beginning to get uneasy, especially the Dublin fans here, not enjoying watching this. In a majority, I know, of a crowd of 73,000 plus. Shane Ryan holding on to it, the goalkeeper. He's not going to try anything too adventurous. He doesn't want to replicate what happened yesterday. There's Jason Foley. Back again to the keeper from Rathmore, who plays outfield for his club. Tom O'Sullivan. Obergliuk again. Dublin chasing, still chasing, Obiaglia taking off, Bulger after him, still Obiaglia. Then it ends up with Gavin White, fed nicely forward as far as Paulie Clifford. It can finish with a score here, and it does! What a passage of play at the end of it all! I don't know how long they had the ball in their hands, in possession. It was nothing whatsoever. We think it was something like three minutes and five seconds. It's 50 seconds, I beg your pardon. And the critical part, the critical part is that it ends with Pony Clipper is really coming into the game now by fisting it over the bar. And that's the three point lead now for Kerry. Patience, but accuracy does well, Jerk. Great evasion uh, skills shown. And get it to the right man, Clifford, over the bar. So there's Paul Murphy on. That's uh, one of the changes in place of uh, Graham O'Sullivan. No score for Dublin now in 15 minutes as they make a change as well. And uh, Niall Scully has come on in place of Brian Howard. 
We won that. It's still just a three-point game. 112 to 19. James McCarthy can narrow that. Ambitiously kicking. Oh, he He's it. done it really well. McCarthy once again lifts the decibel level here at Croke Park among the Dublin fans. His first point of the match, two between them. Uh, just magnificent leadership from McCarthy. In the same way that Clifford's one was a superb finish. Well, that one was from distance, from his wrong side, and all the way over the bar. Comes back again. Costello, the goal scorer, has it. Played across. Here's an opportunity for Kilkenny. He's got a second. Once again, it's a one-point game in the All-Ireland semi-final. What a conclusion to the contest we're getting. 112 to 111. In a flash, just in a flash. You think in the body, Clifford won. Now the carry stretch for home. Down the other end, McCarthy from way out here on the right over the bar. Lovely bit of interchange. And Kilkenny, and he has been so consistent all day for Dublin. Even when the game was going against them. Left foot, how many times have we seen him do that? Who's going to get the next score? Not quite next point wins, but uh, it'll help. It'll be significant, maybe not critical, but it will help. Eight minutes on the clock, less than eight now. Paul Murphy. Into Paddy Clifford's hands again. Over Jack Barry this time. Moynihan, will he win the jump? Well, he did enough, and Barry's able to retain it. Risky. Yeah. Gavin White now carries it forward. Who's going to win this semi final? Fascinating tie. Paddy Clifford. Kerry have looked the more unlikely at many times during the game. But as you can see, only one between them at this stage. Ty Morley. Gavin White's down in his hunkers at the moment, needing attention. Carry inside here by Shawnee O'Shea, who uh, used an arm to brush aside the Dublin player nearest to him. Ty Morley. Sean O'Shea hasn't scored in the second half. Big difference, isn't it? That's Killian Spillane, fed in. Here's O'Shea again. Goal and two points. In the opening 35. David Clifford, one point in the second half, but six in all. Now he's going for one. Will he make it? No, he doesn't. It's a third wide of the second half and a fourth wide in all by Kerry. Stays a one-point game. They're attending to Gavin White. He's back on his feet. He's limping back into them. Oh, he's not. He's gone down again. They've already used four of their subs. Evan Torford is really annoying. He can't get the kickoff off quickly. He's suspecting that uh, they've gone down on purpose, but he's not. He, Gavin White has an injury. Are well, the referees saying play on? Well, he definitely has an injury because he's uh, still down, receiving attention. Now Scotty. Bounces kindly here. Carried on forward here. Johnson. Small, back in, Fenton, McCarthy, got that last one, the second last one, Kilkenny got the last, and here he is again, it's up into the air, tantalisingly in there, fielded beautifully by Shane Ryan, way out as far as Brian Obiaglia. Well, there must be tired legs and tired minds now. And Colin O'Rourke was talking about the good check of the last 10 minutes when these big games are won while it's game on. There's five minutes left here. There's surely another five. Surely. So 10 minutes at least, we think. Dara Moynihan. Body Clifford. Under pressure is Ty Morley. Ooh, he nearly fumbled. Lahif was the one putting in the first He's overcarried. Went Morley overcarried. Yeah, and he's also got a, a cramp, it looks like. Well, now that was a tough call I felt on him. He did fumble surely, but he uh, tidied it up. But he got caught for an over carry. 21 Joe O'Connor coming in for his third championship match, and he's going to replace Gavin White. Joe O'Connor would have been the uh, captain had he been in the starting 15. White's clearly not able to continue and uh, won't be able to play any further apart. He certainly was not feigning injury. Is that the full complement? I think it's five anyway. I think it is, is it? Yeah, yeah that's the five. But with blood subs nowadays, you never can tell. <laughs> I don't think it's possible. Sean McMahon. 
one of the subs to come on, one of four introduced by Dublin, showing a clean pair of heels to a couple of Kerry players, but then losing possession, went off him, it's a line ball for Kerry, there were three of them determined he was not going to get through. He got isolated, his pace took him away from the cover initially, but when he turned back, he turned back into the trap. Morley. Carried out here by Murphy, then it's Foley into Adrian Scalan, almost a fumble, recovered, back out it comes. Swept away as far as Pawdy Clifford. His brother may have six points to his name, he's got two. Moving it forward here. Tom O'Sullivan slipping it back. Dermot O'Connor now looking to get the next score. Stopped there by Evan Comerford, making sure he wasn't going to yield a point to Carey. And carried out now by Brian Fenton. That was a miss, Chair. That was a miss. He should have got it. James McCarthy looking to try and level the game with this attack. John Small in the 68th minute. All the way in here. Bounces around. Foley makes sure. Taps it down. Murphy has it. Under pressure from Kilkenny. Foul, the referee has decided. Free out. Quickly taken by Brian Obiagli. Gets it out to Dara Moynihan. An injured player in the uh, square back there. Jack Barry has it. Once again, Dara Moynihan. Ready to take it back out and away out of trouble. Kick downfield. James McCarthy has won it back, thanks to the strong work of Mick Fitzsimons yes. behind him. Moved on really, really quickly now. Niall Scully, Kieran Kilkenny, the Dubs looking for the equaliser. Will they do even better than that? Here's an opportunity for Small, Paddy Small, bottled up. Kilkenny goes back, makes sure, he kicks it over his left shoulder and kicks it over the bar as well. It's a third for Kieran Kilkenny, and the teams are level for the second time. Dublin 112, Kerry 112, Kilkenny with an excellent shot. Well, he was all across that move. He made the incision, he gave it to Paddy Small. Paddy Small had only the kit, though. He couldn't get the left shot off. He had to recycle it back to Kilkenny. He went into traffic. The power got out of it. And then with that gorgeous point off his right. Let's just have a look at this again here and that was uh, into the back there of Cormac Costello I think it was uh, Jason Foley was going up for this and Cormac Costello yeah, came in behind him hard, and caught him the referee is uh, in to have a look interesting Kevin that in the second half where the scoring's concerned Dublin has really upped it remember there were five down at half time in the second half so far, Dublin have scored 1-6 to Kerry's four points. But you're at halftime, you and I are very much aware that the breeze is significant. The shooting is easier, the foot passing is easier, and you can get a lot more distance. Uh, you can see that the Dublin shots are much more easy to guide over the bar than that breeze we spoke about in the first half down at the hill end. There has to be a winner. Into the 70th minute here now, five minutes of additional time is now being added on. So will the teams determine who reaches the All-Ireland Final to play Galway in the next five? Or will it go on a bit longer? That's held up here. David Clifford back toward Joe O'Connor. Clifford spreading it to Dara Moynihan. Came on and scored. Now, can he do it again? Retained by Kerry. Killian Spillard. Moynihan. Oh, looking easy now, that's for sure. Both sides will mine that ball like a dead diamond. Spillard again. Lost it and gave it away. Retained there by Dublin. Won by Cormac Costello. And away go Dublin and they will have possession. Well, just as I say, they have to mind this. Another fumble. A fifth change made by Dublin. And they bring on Kean Murphy. Mick Fitzsimons is coming off here to our left, Ger, And he's shattered from the physical effort 
uh, that he has put in. He has been so game. The amount of balls that he won 50-50 and directed back towards Dubs. We were watching it very carefully in the second half. Absolutely magnificent. Davy Byrne got a, a yellow card there. Yeah, Mick Fitzsimons, is a real testament to the man. His love of Gelly football. He's kept himself so fit, so eager to play football. That's Byrne. Keen Murphy now, the newest man in. Who's going to be the hero for one of these teams? Kieran Kilkenny. They go with Niall Scully. Scully, it's a tough angle, it's a tough ask. It's way up into the air, it's ballooned to the left, it's missed. It's an eighth wide. It was a chance. Anything from here on in with three minutes left is a chance. Well, anything from here on in could be the winner because there's a, the bodies are are shattered out there. There isn't a lot left in the tanks. Kerry haven't scored now, Kevin, for 12 minutes. They go again. Brian Obiaglia. On as far as Moynihan. Booting it long. It bounces awkwardly for the first man who was uh, Clifford. On for O'Shea. And the free has been given. The foul committed by Lee Gannon, the referee has decided on Shawnee O'Shea. Have a look at it here. Hand on the back, it was around the upper yeah. shoulder as well. I'd like to see the other angle, uh, just in case uh, the carry man was holding. But I don't think, I think it was a foul. It's a big call, of course. And is this, happy. is this the moment? Is this the point coming up here by Shawnee O'Shea, the 24-year-old captain of the team? Oh, Will he, this see them into the final? He'll get this, but there'll be plenty of time, I'm sure. A goal and three. Well, O'Shea made it all himself, in fairness. The ball hopped over Clifford's head, and he took it on, took on the responsibility. Are we looking at a first Galway Kerry final for 22 years? The last one went to extra, to, went to a, a replay. Brian Fenton played in, caught brilliantly. What a good mark that was. Brilliantly done there by Paddy Small. Wow, he sure did. He jumped in high and he was nearly surfed by the curve. Oh, and they brought it in. This is critical. And now a different free taker can take it. Dean Rock can now take it. It's not a mark anymore. And now that's significant. That's a draw game, surely. And that's Dean Rock. Just two points scored by Dean Rock, both from freeze in the first half. You can see the clock. We're inside the last 60 seconds that's uh, scheduled of the five. We're looking at extra time. Yeah. Was and it Dean Rock? Was it the centre? Sure. I didn't notice. Was it the centre? I, I didn't think see so. quite what happened. It's the lever. Dublin 113. Kerry 113. They're level for the third time. Well, they always say at least, don't they? So you never know. The referee might well decide to allow play to develop here and see what happens. It's 20 seconds on the clock. Well, Bergliuk is uh, restrained there by Costello. The referee says, you're on an advantage, Kerry. Carry it on. Jack Barry does. They still have the seconds. They can still win it without going to extra time. Murphy kicks it down. And that's a pull down of David Clifford here unceremonious Johnny O'Shea surely will come out hasn't he the big boost well this oh, is a huge one if they decide to go for it the goalkeeper is offering his services as well <laughs> not sure if uh, Jack O'Connor wants him to hit it but he's bringing him up anyway and that was the uh, foul there by Davy Byrne and Byrne was on a yellow card already well do you remember Ger uh, a guy called Stephen Cluxton with a big kick <laughs> once upon a time it's got to be uh, Shawnee O'Shea anyway. He's got the ball in his hands. Now putting it on the deck. So Jack O'Connor watches on. First year back in his third spell as manager of Kerry. The game deep, deep into stoppage time now. Over the five minutes. Yeah. This is... To win it. Let me see. 55 metres out from the target. He has Kicking the range. into a... Hill 16 goal area, full of Dublin fans. A tiny little pocket of Kerry supporters way up at the top. 
watching, waiting, up into the air. Is he's it going Evans? the right way? Yes, he's got it! Shawnee O'Shea has scored for Kerry. He's got a goal at four. They are surely in the all Ireland final. There can hardly be any yeah. more time left. There isn't. Kerry, with the last kick of the game, have beaten Dublin. They have beaten the Dublin team for the first time in 13 years. What a dramatic finish. It looked like it was destined for extra time and much, much more of what we've seen already. But credit, Shawnee O'Shea, an amazing kick from a huge distance out. And Jack O'Connor's team will be back in two weeks' time where Galway will be their opponents. And what a final that should be. The Dubs bow out. A Crestfall and Sean Bugler and all of the others. They've gone from the championship at the semi-final stage. And Kerry, who were one of the favourites right at the beginning of 2022, have in the end justified that favouritism. But it's taken a free of enormous proportions, a hugely difficult one. The wind a factor as well. But a man who is very much in form did it for Kerry and they will be in the final. It was a magnificent kick, fit to win any match. I felt he had the range, but of course my concern was the wind blowing against him and the tired legs, Gerald. We were up at, what, 75 minutes at that stage. The tired body, the tired legs. Well, Brian Sheen is just across from us here, Gerald, in the commentary. He knows a bit about uh, these long shots. What a kick it was, what a kick it was. Great height, but lovely curl, lovely curl bringing it right in over the black spot he knew the minute he hit it that it was the winner and it gets them the ticket the golden ticket to the all-ireland final it's a Kerry team that has been heavily dependent for their scores from david clifford and from shawnee o'shea Pawnee clifford chipping in as well with two but a day for jack o'connor and Kerry to savor they are back in the all-ireland final and this time it won't be the dubs that's the way it was it back in 2019 two matches then john small bitterly bitterly disappointed but david clifford one of the men who lit up this match magnificent performance as usual and so in front of over 73,000 at Grove park in the all-ireland semi-final it finishes dublin 113 kerry 114.